Hi, this is Agent Deo Steph, and you're listening to Agent Academy. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash agentacademy. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle or MP3 player. And now, welcome to the Agent Academy. Downloading latest Intel package. Welcome back. I was getting worried about you. Agent Academy, episode number 72, recorded on January 16th, 2020. I'm Agent Goonie Guy. I'm Agent Dewey J. I'm Agent Vane. And we've got a very special guest with us tonight, Agent Deo Steph. Hello. <laughs> And already getting applause. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you doing? And thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on. I'm I'm doing great. And uh, we've got a lot of questions to ask you later on, and hopefully we'll get some in the chat too that we'll throw your way about Ingress at Sea. And so we're super excited uh, to hear more about that. And I'm the voice tonight. I'm on the on the telephone, kinda. Uh, I wanted to <laughs> still keep the the chat in the live stream tonight. So. Uh, y'all got lucky. Oh, don't y'all have to look at my mug. I just didn't want to wear pants. <laughs> <laughs> I don't okay, ever wear knows. pants on the show. What are you talking it's a about? Bad hair day. Bad hair day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we got a lot of s- stuff to talk about. Ingress at Sea is a bunch of events besides that one, and uh, live streams, other live streams besides ours. And there's a a uh, post. Or a, I guess a poll that Dewey J has posted in our Telegram. So interested in how people feel about that question. Go check it out if you haven't. And I guess first I'll just go with uh, what I've been doing this week since the last show. Talked about uh, first wow. Saturday. I was waiting on getting the AP from the double AP event. And so I wanted to get to 10 from getting that double AP. And I missed it. I was 24,000 AP away before they pushed it. I was like, I'm sure I'll have one more day, so I'm not going to go do that last 24K, and uh, oh well. But I, but I hit Another lap anyway. around the block in Effingham would have done it. Right. Just one more. <laughs> one more block. But I did hit 10 and yeah. got some uh, free gear. That's always fun. And the other cool thing I noticed this week is that I haven't noticed all the issues I used to have when I'd go into low cell signal areas and then not be able to connect and spend, you know, 30 minutes trying to play Ingress. And I just haven't even noticed it. And and I was just thinking about that tonight, that they must have fixed it with that last update that we were talking about. So I don't know if you had been experiencing that as well, Dewey J. Uh, No, you're right. The scanner's been a lot more uh, reliable lately. Um, I think I had one time that it kind of wigged out on me, and I I was playing with it trying to get it to wig out. Somebody was saying something about um, stacking bursters, and I'm like, oh, I wonder if you can do that anymore. And not really. Uh, you can do it a little bit, but not like I guess you used to be able to. It didn't well, like that. Well, what else have you been testing out this week and doing this week? Uh, well, I had to go somewhere, so I was in the cell next door. So, as usual, I decided to baff it. And, uh, but strangely enough, I ran into a frog's couch portal. So I had kind of my own little, <clears throat> I guess, uh, first Saturday there, we traded back and forth. So I, I, end, I, I settled for a half bath. I only did a half bath there. Um, and got a little creative. I found a tesserae and I, it's like, you know, I'm a, I wonder what it takes to go through the whole process to put that in. I like, yeah, I'll make that a prime tips. So I threw out a little extra prime tips episode on what to do if you find a tesserae and how you submit it. So go out there and find that. If you got one of those stop sign things, you know, what do I do with it? That kind of takes Hexagons. you. Hexagons. Beautiful. Hexagons. Apparently Beautiful. I need to listen to that one. So, yeah, you need to listen to that one evidently because you don't you, – you you just sort of recycle those things. Well, and I, and I noticed I was looking at some of the previous tesserae and I was like, oh, yeah, I had that one, the, the green <laughs> one with the spokes. I yeah. had that one. I remember seeing that one and had no <laughs> clue on that. what it was. <laughs> you, had it probably like Sunday yeah, that week. It was the first one to find it. Um, and, and the other thing I had is um, I'd heard of a resource. I had never really played with it. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it. Ingress Mosaic. 
Yeah. Make and yes, okay. and Colors. it was really Beautiful a fantastic banner. free force. Yeah. Uh, great to find missions, banners, stuff like that. By the way, there are three Asian Academy, Agent Academy missions out there in the world. Uh, one of them is Goonies. One of them is uh, Zelly Bellies. And I have no idea who the other one is. It's the mystery guy. I don't know. Really? Yeah. You made it. I didn't make that one. I tried to make one, and and it didn't get approved. I was trying to do it for the Effingham first Saturday, and they weren't going to approve it because they thought it was advertising something, which it was. So, uh, so yeah, there's three out there. But that's that's a really good one if you want to search out banners. And if you're going to go on vacation, you're like, you know, I'm going to have to get away for six hours because my in-laws are just nuts. Go there first. Figure out where all the... Uh, missions and banners are, and you'll know where to drive to get your sanity back. Um, I guess we're vain. What did you do this week? Oh, geez. So I, I had a decent amount of ingress over the weekend. I, I guess you could say that was kind of the. It started Friday, uh, right after work. I was helping a bunch of locals try to get up a, just like a local city field. Uh, we just had a plan that we've been working on for a couple of days and just kind of showing some people the ropes, getting more people involved. Uh, so it was just a lot of running around and trying to get portals taken down, get links up. And we had a little bit of a back and forth going. So Friday night, Saturday morning, it was just a constant back and forth battle where, you know, we're hitting sunset portals right before sunset. Everybody's setting their watches and, the resistance are doing the same thing. So props to everybody for, for playing cleanly while we were going through that throughout the weekend. It was a lot of fun. I think a lot of people were definitely engaged on both sides. So I don't know how feelings are in that in that nature, but uh, we got a couple of green triangles up. Green triangles came down. Blue skies? Again, blue skies? Down. Blue skies? There, there were no blue skies, blue skies in the area, oh, but there were adjacent blue <laughs> fields elsewhere. So, Field adjacent? Yeah. I'm going to have to have the whole, the whole darn thing now. Well, don't worry, Dewey J. The uh, resistance is probably going to win the cell this this time down here. and, uh, and oh, Good. That's, that's uh, really odd. And, but there were some huge fields, and uh, I guess Doan, including me, had time to go out and do anything about them. <laughs> I started building a, uh, a nice layered field up during lunch one day, and I was going to finish it the next morning. And then when I woke up, there was an even larger field up and I was like, ah, I got to go to work. <laughs> so they, they probably have that field out. So now it's going to be a perma field. It's going to be, you know, up every day for the next like six months. No, no, I'll get out there this weekend. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> You'll clear it. Got on the hit list. Look out. If that's, what, does that's it. what makes it fun. I mean, if if you're in a cell where you know you're the only one that's building and you're just waiting for stuff to decay, that sucks. So yeah. that's why I prod the frogs all the time. Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go over there and mess you up. Yeah. Poop the frog. Poop the frog. <laughs> Make them jump. And and I don't know, um, Dale, Steph, if you, if you've heard the show before, but we're just talk about basically what we've done since the last mm -hmm. show. But that would be a lot of stuff. So, if, uh, what have you been up to in kind of ingress stuff over the the past week or so? I, I got to admit, I've been pretty lazy. So it snowed in Chicago last weekend. I had planned on uh, on, on going out and doing some fielding. So um, you know, I made my. I think the last time I was seriously active was for. Um, the deploy badge and you know made my made my gold on that one so that was okay but nice. uh you know a lot of cemetery visits um uh, pretty fun you know i was that was actually pretty entertaining because while i was in one of the cemeteries i saw a group of deer um this is you know in the middle of, of uh chicago so you don't expect to see a group of deer <laughs> and a caretaker stops by and he's like um don't get out of your car there's a wolf hiding behind a gravestone oh my god and i was like um First of all, I don't think it's actually a wolf. However, there were coyotes seen recently <laughs> in Chicago, um, which actually attacked some humans. So, oh wow, it's possible. Uh, it gets rough <laughs> up the north part of the state, <laughs> right? <laughs> some ghost deer running through. Yep, ghost deer and 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 ghost wolves. <laughs> they were actually just trying to get that deploy badge. It's all okay. Right. It's good. <laughs> Well, and we have a, a, a few topics to uh, go through, so let, let's get 
done with those so we can uh, get to the real the real show the real stuff, the, real stuff. Uh, the first thing we have <laughs> is, uh, nl1331x event request has been added to uh, google's uh, forums and stuff by niantic and they want to know where do we want to see events and really do you want one in in your area and so it, it, you can go to that Google Doc or form, I guess, and fill it out and request one in your area. It's probably like Chicago. You got to, you know, vote early, vote often. So fill that <laughs> form out 80, 90 times. Request everywhere. That's right. Fill it. Just completely fill that form. Yeah. And we had we had some people in uh, a town nearby Champaign that they're like, oh, we're going to try to make the trifecta because they were talking about, a, you know, trying to get a first Saturday and a mission day. And they're like, well, heck, that's just frame 1313 and just you know make our own little mini anomaly so you know it'll be interesting to see if that influences where that goes you know i'm well, sure they got to i think to some it. degree yeah like I, I think they're they're smart the way that they plan it out where i think they they had posted saying that hexathlon sites would get sort of like a little bit of higher priority for yeah, both sense. mission day applications and i guess November Lima would probably go hand in hand with that. Yeah. So once all of the, you know, names are in the the hat, so to speak, I think as they're sort of picking things out, it would make sense to yeah. just plot a route that would hit as many of those as possible. Yeah, you know, we're going from point A to point B. Is there anything in between that we can hit? That makes a lot of sense. And it, and it seems like all the announcements of all the hex athlons that are being announced, that people are doing them up. Like it's it's not. It's going to be a, a lot more activities, I think, than the the first like field tests for the original hexathlon. So that's exciting. You really have to. I mean, as fun as the hexathlon field tests were, you, you're you are looking at essentially ninety minutes of gameplay, and then as soon as that is over, you're done. So it makes sense why everybody is trying to plan out mission days. I know some sites are talking about trying to get their mission day application for same day. That way you can sort of go do the hexathlon and then immediately following that or a little bit before it, depending on when things go live, you can get your missions in. So yeah. kind of fill out that weekend a little bit and make yeah. it a better excuse for the travel. That's it, exactly. The more of a reason to drive, I'll drive that two, three hours to get to something. You know, Am I going to drive three hours to do 90 minutes of gameplay? Yeah. Am I going to do it for six hours worth of gameplay? Yeah, yeah. And so. if it's if it's like, you know, first Saturday hexathlon mission day, you know, one 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 three, like it's a weekend like event. Yeah. Then at that point, you pretty much like have just, a, a full weekend at that point. Yeah, it's a mini anomaly. And and speaking of the hexathlons, they they released more information. We'll link to all this in the show notes after the show, of course, and we'll try to throw them into chat as well. But they also released uh, April dates. So it's kind of like the the anomalies when they would do you know two different dates. So now now there's some dates in April and some that are closer to uh, well obviously closer to people that that uh, couldn't get to the the first dates, including yeah. me. Like DC is a lot closer than um, Miami, I think. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, and they uh, the registrations open for Perpetua. Uh, so and so there's again there. You can go to ingress.com slash events and get to that. Um, so that registration is open. But if you need to probably get your plans together fairly quick because they're saying registration is going to close at February 29th, that extra day, at 1.30 p.m. local time. And I've noticed that now with the hexathlons that, you know, the whole UTC, what time is it? Gone. It's It's all local time. So you may have to figure out what time it is to where you're going instead of what time is, you know, 1200 UTC or something like that. So, so yeah, if you're thinking of a hexathlon, uh, you might start planning now. You only got a month and a half. And, and is there any real reason not to just go ahead and register now if you're thinking about a location? No, tickets, tickets aren't limited. So despite what the in-app sort of registration page is saying right now, for Perpetua, and it should be the same for Lexicon, the registration is not going to be limited for Hex Athlon events. So just go ahead and register now if you think you're going to be attending. If you end up not attending, it's not going to hurt anything. Um, you'll just show up at the bottom of the scoreboard as all zeros for stats. Yeah. And no pay? 
Is that, that is correct. Yeah, registration is free. I know there was some discussion about that. Now, I know in one of their posts they mentioned uh, some sort of kits. Is, is that I haven't checked the registration yet. Is, is that in the current registration to like buy an extra kit with metals? Because they were going to do the the uh, badges for some of the uh, sensitives. Yeah, so none of the, none of the kits are in the, the store yet. Um, really, at this moment, it's just the ticket registration. So you can go in, you can say that you want the specific time frame that the event is going to be and that you're registering for one, one ticket for yourself. And then it kicks off the email just saying, okay, you're all registered and you're ready to go. So you can show up and just start as soon as the event is ready to go. And, and if you registered early, you might have got gotten a, an email that didn't have the venue. Don't worry. You're, you're going to the right place, hopefully. Um, it was just a bug, and they fixed that. So that's all good. And I, I kind of figure they'll probably just do like they, they've been doing uh, for other events and just that weekend of or the week before just put the kits up for anyone who wants it kind of thing. And I don't it'll think be up sooner. I don't know. I don't think they have like a, a specific registration area or anything like that. It's hack the portal, get started, and, and, and go to town. But I'm sure that those locals are going to want to have a place for you know, people to meet and greet and create those LA portals and frack them and that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, what, what sort of just kind of ended up naturally happening for the September field test that I was at in Rhode Island was everybody just gathered around the, the start portal. Yeah. So where you got the initial instructions and everything was going to kick off. It's just like out of nowhere, a flash mob of people descended upon that one portal <laughs> and uh, a little, some confused locals were wandering around like, what's going on? And, you know, some people were like, is it a Pokemon raid? Like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> and some of the might... events are already putting up uh, pages oh. for their mm -hmm. hexathlons. So nice I don't one. know, we could probably help out with that by making a page of links to all those different pages. So, uh, we'll uh, get that worked up on the website. That way, hopefully, you can get in contact with that local uh, faction, whichever faction you're you're on, to uh, get involved with whatever extra activities are going on farms and uh, bar dressing and and who knows what else. Speaking of intelligence, they're about done with the upgrades on the map. That's uh, tomorrow. Is that right? That is supposedly tomorrow. I guess if everything goes well. I don't know. I didn't see a time, so sometime on the 17th. And I I don't know that I've noticed any difference other than it seems to be working well. So maybe that's what they were doing. Who knows? Hopefully. Yeah, I do know they were still trying to work out the kink where in very portal-dense areas, certain things weren't loading fully. But uh, I know that's still being worked on, and results are kind of varying here and there, depending on when you're loading and, and different things. So hopefully everything is smoothed out soon. Cool, cool. And there was also a live stream this week. Ezekiel Calvin streamed. Yeah, I, that picture looked vaguely familiar. Yeah, maybe I don't know, a hundred pounds less. And... Well, <laughs> you in your younger days, maybe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was joking we could do like a spoof and, and do like Ingress Prime Rib, and I could pose as him. Uh, you, you're set. You're ready to go. All right. Oh, we're qualified. So what, when are we putting the uh, like Asian Academy Magnus together? <laughs> <laughs> Starting like, now. Guy, are, are you going to hide the bodies in your garage? Like, where are we going? How do you know they're not already there? <gasps> we have lost two hosts. I would just say, there's two hosts that we don't see ever again. <laughs> huh. Thanks, Goonie Guy, for the invite. <laughs> right. Hey, they still tweet. The replacement. So. One of us will drop off and it'll be, hey, do you want to be on here all the time? <laughs> Hold on, i got to find that ceremonial dagger to test if I'm a simulacrum. <laughs> Where'd that go? Oh, uh, geez. And they were never heard from again. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, um, I think he did a good job of kind of straightening out some of the lore for some of the people that are, I mean, there's a lot that's happened in the lore in the last year. <clears throat> and uh, so he kind of laid out his story. And uh, it, I think it helped, at least helped me out. It's like, okay, that, that now fits together. Um, so it's a good one. It's a really nice, in a nutshell version of the Osiris universe and uh -huh. Osiris Ezekiel Calvin, or Zeke Calvin, as most of the investigators will call him and his experience going through 
And if you were an astute follower of the lore, you would notice that his timeline was slightly different than what our 1218 timeline was, with sort of everything coming to a culmination with Epiphany Night in 2018 versus way back in 2012 for us. Yeah. I'm telling you, you need to start the uh, Ingress Lore podcast. Cause I'll get some lore nuggets. I'll just put some you know, lore tidbits together and we can just kind of do you like a like melt your mind yeah. corner or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, and well, let me check our poll. Our poll is 90%. The question is, would you post sit reps on Agent Academy website? Right now it's 90%. Heck yeah. And 10%. No way. 0% for what is a sit rep. <laughs> so it looks like it might be something we could do. Well, I think one of those was me for the yes. Oh, it was me for a yes, too. So we, we loaded it up. <laughs> so there's our 90%. <laughs> oh, I also put in for yes. <laughs> How many votes are on the poll? The ballot box. <laughs> so there's four votes, and the three is 90. Oh, wait, that wouldn't. That would I'm not good at math. So Don't do math live. It's... No. Yeah, never do math in public. <laughs> there's, there's nine yeses and one no. Do it that way. And so the other thing you were talking about is doing a um, bath of, of the week. Yeah. And uh, which I think is a great idea. We just need people to submit those. Or yeah, I find a way to do it. Or the only bath of the week will be um, when I fill up the tub. <laughs> bath of the week. Hmm. <laughs> but it's close. Wah, wah, wah. It's, it's blue. <gasps> That's perfect time for the fail trom- trombone. I was going to say, Arctic, what are you doing? Where's the fail trombone? Oh, <laughs> oh. oh and I do got to say a big thanks to everyone from last week who was um, hitting all the all the sound emotes. Um, Krug was in there hitting them, and Arctic, I think, uh, led the list. Uh, so thanks, everyone. That's That's always fun. And it also helps pay the server bill. So uh, I love that. <laughs> and I guess that's pretty much the news of the week. Uh, go to the website and it's see the show notes. <laughs> there we go. Hard to do one up. Um, but what we really want to talk about is ingress at sea, and we're lucky enough to have Agent Dale stuff here to fill us in <laughs> and um, get the boat filled up, and everyone have a great time. So I guess I guess. First thing, if you could kind of go through and uh, let everyone who doesn't know already, what is Ingress at, at Sea? Sure. So we had such a good time the first time we had Mission Day at Sea uh, that we decided we were going to sail again with or without Niantic. Now, the hope is that it will be with Niantic, um, but we're going one way or the other. And so that's why there is a rename right now because... Um, we, we don't know for sure if we're going to get a mission day, but we're applying, right? We're going to follow the same process as everybody else does. And it becomes a little more complicated because we're across multiple countries, but that's all right. Um, <laughs> so Ingress at Sea is a seven-day cruise uh, leaving out of San Juan, Puerto Rico on November 15th. And we will be cruising to Aruba, Bonaire, Curaçao, so the ABC Islands, and St. Martin. Um, and then returning back to San Juan. So it is going to be an epic trip. Those are all amazing, super fun locations, um, fun sun scanners. Um, you know, I, I think it, it's, we just couldn't not go again, right? One way or the other. Well, and it's, it's just seeing all the pictures and hearing the stories. It sounded like it, everybody had a lot of fun. What, what were like some of the, most memorable moments you can think of from the first one? I think for me, I mean, one of the the most fun things was no matter where you went on the ship, and the ship holds, you know, 2,500 to 3,000 people, but we were a pretty large contingent. I think we had about 135, 140 people, um, and everyone had special lanyards. They were really cool. Um, And anywhere you went, you could find an ingresser, and it was so XFAC friendly. Like, it didn't matter what faction somebody was on it's like oh hey there's there's an mdes person let's go get a drink together or um we you know gather on who's going on an excursion uh to look at you know the mayan ruins and there was a big expect group that went and looked at the mayan ruins together 
Um, one of my favorite experiences was we actually had an agent in uh, Grand Cayman who set up a special excursion for us. And so we had three vans that picked us up at the steam at the uh, the cruise ship, took us on a route that um, went by all of our missions. So if you wanted to lazy mission, you could totally lazy mission. It was <laughs> awesome. <Nice>. Um, <laughs> and it just made it really easy, especially since we had some mobility impaired folks. I wanted to make sure that anyone who was going on the cruise could have a good time and could get their missions in. And that was really important to me. Um, and so we, we took the vans, went to this amazing small resort um, where a couple people dived. Um, I scuba, or not scuba, I'm sorry, they scuba, I snorkeled. Um, and then we had a great meal hanging out as a huge group, really got to know everybody. Um, again, met our, met our local agent. We're able to really help him with OPR because everybody uh, changed their special location um, because they'd been stuck not having enough agents to review local portals. Uh, oh, wow. And so he had a flood of, I think, I don't even remember, something like 20 plus portals that went online because everybody helped with portal review. That's cool. So that was, you know, really cool and kind of had a long lasting impact on his, you know, Ingers community. So lots of good stuff. I mean, in general, just really, I met so many great people, um, which is why I think everyone was happy to do it again, even if we didn't have Niantic involvement. Nice. And yeah. even even if they um, don't have involvement, are y'all still planning to uh, make missions or try to get missions Absolutely. made? Absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're doing that. I mean, we have to create the missions in advance. You know, I'm, I'm not super keen on, on the new mission day form where you have to do all the missions before you even have approval uh, for the mission day. It's a lot of work. Um, for something that you don't have approval <laughs> for, but we're going to do it. And then those missions will hopefully go live one way or the other. Um, and, you know, it did work really well. I know there was a lot of debate in some of the communities on the fact that we got special treatment by Sojourner being maintained. Um, and it worked extraordinarily well. So what Niantic did is everyone who wanted to have Sojourner maintained had to pay $5. That was it. Um, and that got them the special badge, which was super, super cool. Um, it did not look like a cat butt. I just have to say, can I say that? <laughs> it wasn't a cat butt badge. It was not it was a cat butt badge. That anchor, that beautiful X-Fac anchor. And yeah, you know, if you put three of them together, you can make a little, little scanner metal field. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So we had the beautiful badge and they, um, basically did a cutoff on Friday and for anyone who had purchased that badge and had, you know, hacked on Friday, they just auto incremented your sojourner throughout the trip. So you could see it increasing, um, which was essential because there were, you know, two or three days where there was absolutely no way to hack. Um, so the fact that they came through, through for us with that was, was great. We had originally looked at, could we have a portal on board? There were a couple really creative solutions um, proposed. And at the end of the day, Niantic was like, that is just way too complicated when we can write a script that will increase your sojourner. <laughs> I wondered how that worked. Yeah. yeah. And I think that was a beautiful compromise and a nice way mm -hmm. to sort of put the good faith towards the agents and that this is an ingress event we understand that people are going to have the sojourner. So having a way to continue that throughout the, the trip was just a nice little touch. It, yeah, exactly. Because there were a lot of people, I think, who wouldn't have gone if Sojo wasn't maintained. Um, and it, with with only one exception, it we didn't have any issues with it at all. Um, and the agent who was the exception, I feel terrible about. But I think it, there may have been a, sh she might not have hacked um, between Friday and Saturday. So we're trying to figure out what went wrong. But um, I can say that I, I cannot guarantee that there will be any sojourner maintenance for Ingress at C2. We are asking, right? We've proven that it worked. Um, we are doing everything to apply to make it official. Um, and I think it was very well received, right? The interest across the global Ingress community was huge in what are we doing, right? What's going on? Like, how are XFAC relations? And overwhelmingly positive. I, th I don't think we had any issues on board. 
Um, I mean, it's everything that Niantic says they want to promote. So my hope is that that we get approval, but I can't guarantee it. Well, and it, it's it seems like it's just a a good deal for Niantic. I mean, y'all are basically doing a bunch of free press for them, and <laughs> at least everybody on the cruise ship knows what Ingress is by the time they leave, probably. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, we we had so many questions. I'm like, what's what is those? What are those lanyards? What are you guys doing? And um, you know, the other question that came up was. Um, what do you do with data while you're at port? Um, that was a really frequent question. And it was different from our, we had some European and some Japanese agents who joined us, a little different for them. Um, in some cases they had to get a SIM card, but for most of the American agents, um, they were able to get international plans like Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, et cetera, have an international plan that's not too expensive. It's like $10 a day, in some cases less, where you can use your existing data plan uh, outside of the US. Hmm. Um, now, what, what can get a little bit pricey is if you choose to have internet while you're on board the ship, your cell plan will not work on board once you're on water. Uh, and so you do need to pay for shipboard internet, um, but that may not be bad either. So you have an option of either you can split a plan with a couple other agents. So people figured that out pretty quick that you could get um, a multi-device up to four devices and then just share the cost. And that was um, at the lower level. There's like two different spe uh, streaming speeds. One they call Voom and I think it's Surf and Stream and the other is just um, Surf. And so if you don't, you know, if you just want to get into Telegram for the week, all you need is Surf. But if you want to be able to you know, download photos and stream movies, then you're going to need the higher end. I feel like with with the the amount of brain power that is in ingress agents, uh, the next trip that you'll probably see like full blown like networks popping up. with <laughs> like, oh no, we yeah. got everybody covered. One plan. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of discussion about it, um, and what was actually really funny is we, we did have some Royal Caribbean um, employees who went on the cruise with us, and so they were able to give us kind of the scoop on what was and wasn't possible within the network, and, and what they found is it really didn't work very well, um, and it's not terribly unreasonable. One of the advantages of um, cruising is you can sort of pre-budget or pre-pay for all of that stuff if you choose to. And so you're not getting hit at the end of the cruise with this ginormous bill. Um, you can say, okay, I'm going to pay off my cruise July. The cruise is in November. Um, you know, I'll pay for this this month. I'll pay for my gratuities next month. Um, you know, I'll pre-book my excursions. Whatever it is you want to do, that's all personal choice. Um, but it allows you to budget over a much longer period of time than maybe you could on a regular vacation. Did, yeah, you, think, get, did you get any converts? Any new players? Uh, I, you know, I don't know of anyone specifically. Oh. I know that I talked to a, a couple people um, who were very interested and, you know, sent them to the app. Um, and they, they didn't necessarily have internet on the ship, so they were going to wait till they got ashore. Okay. But I mean, I know for sure two or three people that I personally talk to who are like, oh, that sounds really cool. And you do this kind of adventurous stuff. And I'm like, yeah, Ingress is the best. You know, I, I joined and I gained 30 new friends who like to get off their couch and go do stuff. How awesome is That's that? That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and you didn't have to lie, say, I'm playing Pokemon Go to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you could actually say, I'm playing Ingress. Yeah, I'm playing Ingress. I mean, there is a little bit of a, have you heard of Pokemon Go? Well, Ingress is completely different. But <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that brings up a question. But people may not be interested uh, in, in our listening group, but did the portal work for Pokemon Go? And Well, is Harry Potter out then? Well, you not, not on, because again, there wasn't a portal on the ship. Um, so, so that wasn't really an issue. But once you were on shore, um, I mean, we had some pretty avid Pokemoners. Um, I also uh, dual game in, in Harry Potter. So I was able to get my Harry Potter stuff. I see you shaking your head, Dewey, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no shame, no shame. Um, but, but yeah, we were able to get our, you know, our, our, uh, our fix of those other games while we were at port as well. Awesome. 
So mm -hmm. it, it worked. I mean, it just worked really well. Um, all of the the costs are, are pretty reasonable. I mean, there's anything from an interior cabin, um, which if you're someone who's not going to spend much time in your cabin, you want quiet and, you know, dark and you want to sleep really well, an interior cabin is awesome because it's it's super cheap. I mean, we're talking less than 700 bucks. Um, you can go all the way up to a high-end cabin and get a suite or a junior suite. I mean, those are absolutely amazing. They come with their own concierge. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think most of our cruisers were either um, an exterior, uh, like a porthole cabin, or they had balconies. And balconies are, are really awesome because you have, you know, about a 20, I don't know what the square footage is, I'm guesstimating 20 square foot um, balcony where that's enough for, you know, a table and two chairs mm -hmm. and you can go sit outside and enjoy your coffee or whatever um, without actually having to see anybody. Um, <laughs> there are, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of us introverts in, in uh, Ingress, so, you know, I can appreciate the wanting to be outside but not having to, to people. Um, and honestly, being in the middle of the ocean and being able to watch the stars from a balcony is pretty spectacular because there aren't any other lights other than the ship. And could you get your concierge to hack for you? Ah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's against the TOS. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's why it doesn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't so. work on the boat anyway. Mm hmm So, yeah. Do you guys have other questions about the cruise? Yeah. It's, um, I think... So I've been only been on one cruise that I actually like had to pay for stuff. Like I, I went when mm -hmm. I was a kid, but uh, my wife and I went on our honeymoon, and um, some of the things that like people um, might be confused about or, or whatnot. I'm wondering maybe you can help out clarifying. Like um, so, like when you get a room, it's normally two to a room kind of thing or how, how does yeah, that work splitting typically it's two people a room um you can get up to four per room if you get a special room um but you know that you just have to call so we use a booking agency called cruises only they're awesome and um they take care of like they're the middleman between us and the and royal caribbean and they really make sure that everybody has everything that they need um how does that work with like uh, pricing? So if you got a room that normally is two people, is it still the same price for each person? No, it's not. It's so it's there is a cost per person because your cost includes food, and so four people per room is not necessarily cheaper. It might be incrementally cheaper, mm -hmm. um, but you know you can't necessarily count on it. And and that's a good thing to bring up. I I assume they still do it the same way, but. Uh, like food is like there twenty four seven. Like yeah, I mean like buffets so the, the only, and the only thing that's changed is um, room because people were wasting a lot of food. They've changed room service so that um, you we have to pay like a seven dollar room service delivery charge, but that includes anything. It's just a single charge per delivery. So anything you could possibly want to order, you can have delivered to your room. Hey, that's better um, than Uber Eats. Yeah, <laughs> but that's that's just to prevent waste. Um, but they have a kind of a casual buffet that has, you know, open for breakfast, open for lunch, open for snacks, open for dinner. There's a formal dining room. Um, one of the fun things is that there is a, um, you know, on this cruise, it's a seven night cruise. So there are two formal nights. And so it's optional. You don't have to eat in the formal dining room. Um, but if you enjoy dressing up and you want a chance, you know, to get swanky in a dress or in a suit or even just a shirt and a tie, I mean, it's not super, super fancy. There will be people there in tuxes. Um, for the ladies, we did have a course at night, which was really fun because, you know, we're Ingress. That's what we do. Um, and uh, the, the food is just amazing. So the formal dinner, again, you can order anything you want if you want three appetizers and two entrees and five desserts, they will bring it to you and they won't even bat an eye and they might even say, is there something else I can get you, sir? <laughs> I'll give you toast. <laughs> That'd be dangerous. I, I would just, I, I would eat myself into like, a food coma every single day. <laughs> I mean, they go so far out of their way to try and make you happy. I mean, the staff on these ships are amazing. 
I mean, all it takes is something as simple, and I and I, I see Jelly Lily in the comments. Like, all it takes is saying, "Hey, I like escargot," and escargot will magically appear at your table every night for the rest of the cruise. <laughs> I mean, <Wow. laughs> and, and do they do that? Uh, so, like every night, you have kind of like uh, a couple meal times, and you're kind of set at a meal time usually. Or? Yeah. So for the cruise that we're going on, um, there are two options. So you can do my time dining, which is if you don't want to cr- eat with a larger group, um, you can choose to select that, and then you know you schedule the time that you're going to eat. Um, there is early dining, which is I think 5:30, and then late dining, which is what we do at eight o'clock. And that is when the majority of the cruisers will eat together. Um, and it sounds late for people who are used to eating early, but you have excursions that may not get back. And the advantage of, of being uh, into formal dinner late is it gives you time to change, to get comfortable. You can grab a snack on your way in because remember, everything is free. So why not grab a plate of chips and a burger, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, it's it's crazy what happens. And then um, you know you go to your formal dinner. It's a sit down white tablecloth. You know they um, appetizer, entree, dessert. Again, sometimes multiples of those. Um, and you get whatever you want. And they're really really good about accommodating special needs as well. So if you're diabetic, if you have a gluten intolerance, if lactose you know if you have serious allergies um basically you'll let chappy who is our contact at cruises only know he'll put it in your cruise profile and then we recommend that on the first day you just speak to the maitre d or to your waiter and they'll start showing you the menu for the next day and if there's nothing that you can eat they'll custom make you something um which i find pretty amazing so yeah like, like that's the one thing like looking at the prices um i mean it's cheaper than staying in a, in a hotel you know for seven days i mean it's that's crazy and then yeah. you get the free mm-hmm. food on top of that so yeah. it, it's definitely a great deal and I, and i know there was some uh timing coming up soon that that's really important that uh we need to get out or you need to let everybody know about yeah, so um, the way the pricing works for the cruise is we, you have to put in a deposit pretty far in advance. So the cruise is in November. Tomorrow is the last day for the cheap deposits. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone will not end up paying the same deposit, which is a total of $500 per cabin. Um, but the timing for that changes. So I believe I, I need to look it up. Um, but the the you can book at any point after tomorrow. Um, But at that point, you would have to pay the full deposit of $500. Um, Up through tomorrow, it is only um, $200 per cabin or which, you know, $100 per person, which is a super good deal. There's a tiny chance if we get really good response um, that they could extend the cheaper deposits for us. They did that last year and they've already done it once. So, you know, if a bunch of people see this and they're like, oh, my gosh, we want to we want to book. Um, they may give us more time with the hundred dollar de- per person deposits. Hopefully, but, all six of our listeners will. Yes, <laughs> you never know. I posted this on Reddit and it went into our cruise chat. So, uh, you know, hopefully, we'll have some folks who will come in and, and listen. Um, but and think- you know, it is important to understand that if you are booking as a single, you do pay double price. Um, there is a, a slight discount because your booking um, includes the cost of the cabin, all of your food. You pay gratuities and t- some taxes on top of it, which is not a huge increase in cost from what you see. Um, and it is fully refundable. Um, a lot of the questions that I got last year were on, you know, if I see a cheaper booking online, can I just book that one? And the answer is no, because our perks on board are determined by the number of people we have in our group. And the only way to get you in our group is if you book through cruises only. Um, And that's because they pay for a lot of those perks. So if they're not getting the financials coming into them from the booking, they're not gonna extend the perk to you. I mean, it's just simple economics. That's nice. Makes yep. sense. And I think one of the you know main questions that I had while I was actually going through and reading a lot of the FAQ material and mm-hmm. like as somebody that has never been on a cruise before, 
I think one of the initial things that confused me was looking at the the booking site and thinking like, okay, I'm I'm booking a room, but how do I get the second person onto that room? Yeah. And it initially looked like both of us were going to be paying for full room cost, which now that I'm I'm hearing this, that's not necessarily the case. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm sort of thinking like, wow, that's a lot cheaper than what I even assumed after reading through all the material. Like if anyone mm-hmm. would get hung up on a similar thing, I guess now's the, the learning opportunity. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So when you look at the website, um, you know, it'll show the per person rate and it'll show the per cabin rate. And so when you book, um, as you make your initial deposit, you can actually immediately add the second person. In fact, if you're booking as a single, you just have to add your name twice. Um, otherwise, it won't allow you to continue to book. Um, in order to fix that so you don't pay, oh, I started to go in. Um, as a single person, they will remove the second set of gratuities and taxes. So you save that from you know a, a true double rate. Um, in order to get that accomplished, you can either email cruises only once you get your invoice. Um, easiest and what I recommend is to just call them. And you can speak directly with Chappie, who is number is on our website, or you can actually speak with anybody in the um, customer service department once you're booked. Um, if you haven't booked yet, you definitely want to talk to Chappie uh, because he'll get you into our group. Um, but really, they're amazing, super, super helpful. Easiest thing to do if you can call is to call because they will get it straightened out. How many people do you think you've got so far? That's a good question. Before Christmas, um, we had, and this was like two weeks before Christmas, we had 14 cabins, which is like 30-ish people. But that was, I mean, it's almost a month ago now, and I don't have updated numbers. So um, I'm expecting that we'll have, you know, quite a few more. Last year, um, we spiked up to 98, um, you know, within two months of initial booking. And then there's naturally some attrition as people, you know, around the time of final deposit, you know, figure out if they really, excuse me, really can go. Bless you. (laughs) Thank you. I couldn't get to the mic in time. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw the, I saw the attempt. It was like, no, I must mute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It's fine. Um, I was like, oh, no. Um, but, but yeah, so, and other things to know, if you do need to cancel, um, again, the advantage of going through us and through cruises only because they are fully refundable is everything but uh, $37 per person of the initial deposit is refundable. Oh, wow. And that's basically. Yeah, I mean, it's... That's amazing. You don't find that with a lot of the online. Like, if you see those really good deals, they're almost always non-refundable. Yeah, and you were... uh, I guess two things real quick. One, um, so we record this on uh, Thursdays, and this is Mm -hmm. the 16th, so uh, the date is the 17th for the final. Okay. Yeah, so... Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, you gave us a little bit of wiggle room. Technically, it was the 16th, but it's, it's really through tomorrow so okay <laughs> and uh the other thing was uh you were mentioning uh gratuities and stuff uh mm-hmm. because that was the one thing when we were on the cruise that was like y- like you didn't even know about that except for then they had like a panel where they told you about mm-hmm. gratuities and it was like oh god we gotta get together all this money to like hand out in envelopes and stuff it sounds yeah. like it's different or they, they've changed it so um you know There are different opinions on gratuities and and cruise lines, and you can find all kinds of debates online. But at the end of the day, my opinion on it is they work really hard to make you happy, and they deserve every penny. And at this point, um, the cruise lines have kind of set up their wages, so they depend on that gratuity to supplement what they're making from the ship. So you've got two options with gratuities. It is voluntary. You can um, turn them off once you're on board the ship if you choose to um do i recommend that no um, right. but you you do have that option and some people do it because they they want to hand out cash individually to the people um who serve them and that's fine as well um you can choose to prepay your gratuities and it's i think 14 dollars a day per person um for gratuities and so um I, again, that's all on the web page, and I can I can double check those numbers, but I believe that's what it is. Um, 
and that, and that that's can, nothing. I mean, compared to like the service you're getting, I think that's oh incredible. Yeah, and so, so can you tip more then? I guess you do that in cash. Or? Yeah, so you can you would do that in cash is generally recommended, um, and just hand it to people. And I, I've done that. Like I'll usually bring some twenties with me. Um, so like the bar staff or my waiters or my my room steward, someone who's really you know helped me out. I'll, I'll hand them a you know a packet with a twenty. Um, it's not necessary, but again, they work really hard. So um, I like to prepay my gratuities because again. It's done. I don't have to think about it. I'm not getting a bill at the end of my cruise. Yeah. Um, some people want that cash up front and, you know, they're going to invest it or do whatever. And, you know, so then they pay it at the end and that works for them. Yeah. The last thing you want to do is hit the slot machines too long and go, oh, God, I don't have a <laughs> 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 Stay on the boat. Stay on the boat. And that's head. actually a, another thing that people have asked about is how does onboard cash work? So you don't use cash for anything on board. Um, you will either create a cash account, meaning that you put down a deposit um, when you get on board the ship, and then that's your limit on your, your set sail pass. Or, which is, you know, again, probably more common, is people will use a credit card um, against their set sail pass. And you can set spending limits. So I know people with kids who will say, this child may not spend more than twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Yes. <laughs> yep. Um, and uh, and and so yeah, it, it is important, particularly if you're you're rooming with someone who's maybe not a family member. You can each have separate uh, set sale passes linked to your own individual cards. Awesome. And we're getting close to the end of the show. So before we we <laughs> hit that, um, I did want to ask: um, Is the is it the same website people should go to for more information? Uh, yeah, so it's missiondayatsea.com. We didn't change our, our title. Um, we won't has, tell them. <laughs> has the FAQ. <laughs> um, it also has the link to book. Um, there is a uh, telegram. The best place to connect with the community that's planning on going on Ingress at Sea is, is via telegram. So there is an announcements channel that has zero chatter because it's a very chatty bunch. Um, and then there is a telegram chat um, where everybody's just getting to know each other and sharing tips and tricks and all kinds of great information. So I'd encourage everyone to, to hop onto that. Um, I also created a forum um, post on the Ingress forum and there's a new post on the subreddit uh, for Ingress as well. Is that a good place for, say, solo sailors to try to find someone to fill out a cabin with? The Telegram is absolutely <laughs> the best place to do that. We have a uh, a, so, a, a roomies wanted chat okay. um, where people can fill out the spreadsheet and try and find someone to room with. Okay, great. And we'll make sure we get these links from you so we can put them in the show notes. Yep. Um, and uh, there's tons more questions, so hopefully we can get you back on the show in a, yeah. in a few months or something, and we talked about maybe getting some updates from you uh, when you get a chance, just that we can play on shows in between then. And um, if anybody has questions, please send them to us. Go ask in the Telegram as well. Um, that way, we I, can... volunteered, I volunteered to go as a reporter for Agent Academy. Agent Academy, <laughs> <laughs> Agent Academy. <laughs> Agent Academy. <laughs> financial people, please. I don't want to have to work with it. We'll live stream Charge while on the Agent Academy account. Like, <laughs> yeah, just put, what are you doing? Put the credit card. Use the corporate card. Use the corporate, the corporate card. card. Put the corporate card in there. And I did want to, um, we did have some comments in chat that I want to throw out there. Tony J1989 said, so much fun. There's a lot of FCs in. And also <laughs> said, drink and Wi-Fi package was a great deal. So look into those. Um, Jelly Jelly Lily said, board games room was super mm -hmm. fun on the cruise. Mm-hmm. So, I can't believe I didn't mention that. Oh my gosh, yeah, it was amazing. So that's that's just like an extra bonus. More games, mm -hmm. more fun all the time. And also said that uh, Mission Day at Sea cocktail hour was superb. Mm -hmm. We had a free free cocktail hour for everybody. Um, so we had enough people going that uh, that was one of the perks I was able to negotiate. So there was a meet and greet on uh, the basically the second day that we were at sea and uh, had everybody together free like... I mean, they were coming fast and furious, so there was uh, no shortage of booze. Uh, free drinks! <laughs> free drinks! <laughs> and, and besides all that, all the stuff that you're putting together and uh, the group's putting together, like, cruises are notorious for all the, like, 
uh, almost like Broadway shows and mm-hmm. and comedians and magicians and all this crazy stuff. No telling what will be on on this one yet. I'm sure that probably mm-hmm. doesn't get planned for a while, but um, it's just so much more to do as well as the excur- excursions and all the great this places. This one you can will see. also have an ice skating rink. Our last ship had an ice skating rink. <laughs> So there were there were ingressers at sea ice skating, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, don't forget, don't forget to mention you can play ingress on this whole. Thing. Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, the uh, uniques alone. Like if someone said, "Hey, for you know under a grand, you can get uh, how many uniques?" Like, well worth it. So many uniques, and um, you know, again, unique. There were people. Who, we did special banners, so not only did we have the mission day at sea banners, but. Um, one of the agents who went along created connecting banners for people who wanted to have six in each port. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll probably do the same thing um, next time as well. That sounds great. Any more last questions before we go out? Anything else you wanted to say, Dale? No, thank you so much for having me, and and I encourage the questions, and and you know, hope people will join us. It it really is a great time, and again, even if you join after the early deposit, you can still book really up until the ship leaves. Although I encourage you to do it beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard on the pocketbook when you do it the day before. It is. It becomes much more expensive. <laughs> Yeah, so go get those deposits right now, right when you're hearing Do this. Do it. And, right now. Um, thank you so much for joining us on the show, and we'll get more questions, and, or we'll have some of the, and hopefully we, we'll get you back on. And uh, thanks, everybody, for listening, for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And we didn't even get to talk about Anomalama, but that'll be next time. Sorry. <laughs> the passcode this week is AAMDAS2AA. So, thanks again, everyone. Bye. <laughs>